We're going to model this old needle in this video, and in the next video, we're going to do the textures. It's very easy to do, so let's get started. All right, so here we are in Blender. I'm going to press A to select everything and delete. Make sure my move tool is on. I'm going to press one to look from the front and I'm providing the reference image. If you'd like to download and model this with me. So I'm going to press shift a image reference and find the image. Once I found it, I'm going to click load image and there it is. I'm going to press S to scale and drag it up just a little bit and G to grab and I'm going to move it so that my 3d cursor is right near the bottom. Now, when it comes in, it comes in as this thing called empty. I'm going to scroll my mouse here and click here and choose this arrow. And if I click that, it means I can't select this. I'm going to leave it on for the moment, though. All right, we're going to start modeling. Shift A, mesh, cylinder. Come down here. I'm going to change this to 20, just like that. Go into edit mode by pressing tab Z for wireframe. Choose wireframe, S to scale and make it smaller. I'm going to drag it up in the Z and I'm going to zoom in by rolling my mouse, hold down shift and uh, the middle mouse button, just position this a bit better. And now I want to move my reference image just a little bit. So I'm going to click on the empty here and I'm just going to move, let's see, let's click on the actual image and just move it a bit. So it lines up with the cylinder, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's probably good enough. Now I'll click the arrow so I can't select the empty, uh, just my actual mesh. Go into edit mode and S to scale just a little bit more so it matches. Okay, cool. So I'm still in wireframe and I'm in vertex selection mode here. So I'm going to press B and box select and grab these bottom points and just get the line them up down here. Now I'm pressing E and S and scale it out just a little bit. E come down E and come down a bit more and now I'm going to scale out like this and down a little bit I'm going to click over here E and S and scale out I like to do this in vertex selection so I can see my vertices and match it up with the diagram E come on down to there E and S to scale in until we match this, the diameter of this. Roughly, again, it doesn't really matter. Just making a needle down to there. E and S come into there. E, pull it down. Okay, zoom in if you need to. E and S come out to there. E, come on down to here and then press S to scale. Come out like that. Okay. Um, I think for this part, I'm going to press E and come out just a little bit, have a little bit of a flat section there. That's fine. E and S will scale in. E, come down. E and S. E, so it's pretty much always the same thing. E and S. E and S to scale. Pull it out. E and pull it down. E and S, and then E one more time. Let's leave that for the moment and come back up. This, all this is, is going to be one piece. Let's press um, Alt A to deselect everything. B and box select all of these. So we're getting all of the vertices. That's why we're doing this in wireframe. Pull it up to here. Okay. Let's press E and come out and S to scale it out to there. E and come up to here. E and come up to this top line there and S to scale. Then we'll come out straight. E, pull it out. E and S, scale it in. E and pull it up to here. Now we're going to make the needle part and it's going to angle in or taper. So let's go E and S, come in to there. E, come up to around the top. Zoom in, S to scale, and just do something like that. 
and with that in still selected let's just press R to rotate and that's good enough if it's off the diagram like that that's totally fine so we've done the main body let's press Z and solid let's hide the empty by clicking on the eye and let's select it all let's come over here and choose face orientation and note that it is blue so that means the polys are facing the right direction so that's okay we'll deselect press tab to come back into object mode we're going to add a subdivision surface and you'll see that we'll lose the shape of this i'm going to press Control 2 you can come over here add modifier subdivision surface but it's the same thing if you go Control 2 that's two levels of subdivision as you can see there and that's what i'm going to be using uh, i can go ahead and right click and shade smooth as well so we've launched the shape so that means we have to add some edge loops and do some other work so go back into edit mode click on face selection select that top face we're going to delete it so x faces just leave it like that for now but we're going to come in here and add some edge loops so control r click and pull down to near the bottom there and that will give some support to this needle part all right we're going to do that again here bring that down click we'll bring an edge loop up to here and then periodically we'll go back into object mode and we'll look at our work and say is that does that look good enough and that part looks good enough to me so we're going to move on go back into edit mode i'm going to do control r and pull in to near the middle i don't i don't go right to the end control r and bring an edge loop out to here Control R, bring an edge loop up to here, and then go back in and just look. I want a pleasant look. I don't want it too sharp. I don't want it too round. I just want, I just want what I want. <laughs> Control R, come down to here. Again, I'm going close, but not right at it. And I don't always put an edge loop on either side of my original edge. There was my original edge. Um, I put one here. I don't always put one on the bottom. Okay, let's do one here bring this up to give some support in that one pretty close and let's just look i think i do want this a bit sharper so i'm going to bring an edge loop up here and let's see sometimes i'll do and then i'll come back and i'll decide if i want another one in there um let's see if i put one right about there not too close gives that a little bit more of a def defined region so i'm going to leave that so let's come back in and um let's bring an edge loop up near here let's bring an edge loop in here oh see that's starting to get a little bit tight let's just put it about hmm, let me think about this one let me, let me have a look at this i think i've got one in there that's a bit too tight uh let's delete this edge dissolve that we'll come back in like that maybe i will bring one in just a little bit tighter do that kind of a thing and how is it looking yeah okay let's keep going drop an edge loop like that bring an edge loop here and down that could maybe be a little sharper so i'll bring an edge loop and sometimes i will make them roughly equal distance so maybe i'll bring this one down just a little bit so that these there you got the middle edge and then this one and this one are kind of equidistant that makes sense control r underneath it doesn't always have to be that way it's just what your eye likes i'll bring an edge loop in here around this circle and i'm going to bring one up so I get a nice join there, but it's just kind of smooth. I'm going to bring an edge loop down here and then control R for an edge loop up near the top. And um, I may put one on this surface there to just sharpen that up a little bit. Getting close to the bottom. Control R. Pull one in there. Pull one up here. Control R for some support on this region up near the top and down. Yeah, that's looking great. And we need some definition down here. Control R down there. And we're going to need a couple more. One on here going up. One on here going down. That looks fine. And we'll come in this area. We'll come up there. We'll come 
up here. I think one more here. And then for this area here, we're going to select that face. So I press 3 and went into face selection. And then I'm going to bevel this, Control B, pull pretty far back, something like that, and then roll my mouse up a few. Then I think I rolled it up three times to make a sort of a circle. So let's go back and look at this now. It is a piece of metal, but you know, it's a 3D piece of metal. It's sort of a creative thing. So I don't want the edges too, too sharp. Uh, some of them probably could be a little sharper. Maybe I'll put an edge there just because that's where the cylinder part goes. And then for the top, what I figured we would do is press two to go into edge selection, shift and alt and click there to get that whole edge. Make sure nothing else is selected, by the way. Just go Alt A, uh, yeah, Alt A, uh, Shift and Alt and click there. E and S and come in. And I'm going to turn off the subdivision by just clicking on the monitor screen there, just for the moment, just so I can see the width and scale it to the way I want. I'm going to press 1 to look from the front, Z for wireframe. In fact, I'm going to 1 so I can see my, verti my vertices a little bit better. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to press E and pull down in the Z, down to about there. No one's ever gonna look in there. I'm gonna rotate this R to rotate and just go like that, make it kind of straight, and I'll just S to scale it out a bit. That's gonna be just fine. No one's gonna be looking. Let's turn the subdivision back on and come up here, and you'll notice it's a little bit funny. All right, so we're going to uh, bring an edge loop up to near the top, like that, and then Control R and edge loop there. Control R and edge loop there. And that will be it. Okay, so save, Control S. All right, so let's bring the uh, empty back by clicking on the eye and we can see our needle. Now we're gonna make the handle part. My 3D cursor is still right there, so that's great. So let's go Shift A and let's use a curved circle. That'll come in there. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab and S to scale a little bit. And now let's RX90, rotate X90, and press G to grab and just with your mouse, just pull it over so it is over one of those. S to scale a little bit and G and just position it. And then let's give it some thickness so we can see it. So press on the curve icon there, scroll down to a geometry and under bevel, let's uh, do the depth. Uh, we're going to pull to the right, but hold down the shift button, then it'll move a little bit slower. Pull your mouse to the right and get the approximate thickness. Press S to scale until until you match the diagram as much as you feel it's uh, necessary. Uh, something like that is probably okay. So that would be my, my loop right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, um, because this is a, a curve, I'm going to convert that to a mesh. So I'm going to scroll up in the curve dialog box where it says resolution. And when I convert it to a mesh, um, there could be a lot of geometry in there and I don't need that much. So I'm gonna actually change this to three. And you see, you can see that it's become sort of segmented there. I'm gonna right click and convert to mesh. And that's done, that's fine. I mean, I can go control two, uh, you know, to put two subdivisions on it. I can come in and I can scale it just a little bit bigger and that's always a good thing. Um, and with my 3D cursor there, make sure I've set my origin to the 3D cursor. The origin of this is the 3D cursor. We can now mirror this. So I click mirror, and it's a little bit off the diagram, but that's going to be just fine. And you know, it is central, as central as we're going to need it to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply not the subdivision, but the mirror. We'll apply that mirror, and then I'm coming to edit mode. And I'm going to press um, Alt A to deselect everything. And then I'm going to click on anything, one vertex, and go Control L. And that will select everything linked to there. And I'll get just the one, Shift D and G. So Shift D to duplicate, G to grab. And I'm just going to move it down uh, till it's here. And just make sure that this the circle kind of goes into this region here. So just position it somewhere that it looks like it's uh, in there. And we now have those. The last thing that we need to model is this, so some kind of connector with the 3D cursor still there. Let's go Shift A Mesh Plane, bring in a plane. Look from the front, S to scale, pull it down, 
like this that's the scale i'm going to go into wireframe so you can see uh inside okay that looks good e to extrude come up to here okay now i'm going to press three to look from the side press a to select it all it's too wide so let's in the y the, with the green arrow let's go sy scale it in the y until it's inside these cylinders so this line these lines here with the circles are the cylinders like that go back into solid mode just check it out you can hide the empty at this point just confirm that it's inside and if you want you can go sy again a little bit and do that let's go back into wireframe press 3 for face selection and select that face hold down shift select that one and x faces delete them go back into solid view let's bevel this by pressing 2 for edge selection click there hold down shift click there there hold down shift click click there control b to bevel pull roll your mouse back to zero so you have that and put in one or two extra segments click to accept all right deselect go back in object mode right click and shade smooth all right let's make sure everybody is in the right orientation it's all blue so that's good okay so that is the needle now what i'm going to do is i'm going to join everybody so i'm going to take these and this and that so i held down shift i got everything Control j to join now we've lost our subdivision so let's go let's see yeah let's go oh did i miss this guy huh? Control 2 for two subdivisions on the whole model okay and if you want to see how many uh, polys, uh, polys or vertices you've used you know it's not low poly not really but we just want it to look good we're just going to render and that is our model we can come over here and turn on the cavity shader choose a matte cap if you have one uh, that you think will make it look uh, the way you want it to and uh, you can also turn on both and you can knock these values up and that might make it look kind of cool but we're gonna we're gonna do materials next time you can turn off all these things here and have a look at your work and that is our needle okay cool very simple very nice and, and in the next video we'll add the materials to this and make it look kind of old and we'll do that soon so thanks for watching see you soon